Congratulations on your new job. It's an important one. Because you'll be caring for children, there are things you need to know to keep them safe, healthy, and happy. Take a few minutes to see what the state of Arizona requires you to know as you begin caring for children. Some of these requirements will depend on the center where you're working, but there are basic guidelines for areas from hand washing to sun safety to child abuse, and these need to be followed for every child. Every day in the life of a young child gives them a chance to learn how to get along with others and how to be responsible for themselves. That's what makes your job so important. You want to be positive in helping a child to behave and you want to be a good role model too. Let's face it, all children show undesirable behavior at one time or another. Actually, all grown-ups do too. There are a few things you should keep in mind while you're working with children. It's normal for young children to be curious, active, and impulsive. Children are social beings. They have a need to belong and a need to feel important. Young children who are acting out are often frustrated because they don't know another way to tell you what they need. There are many different discipline techniques that can be used effectively, but there are some things you can never do. Things like corporal punishment, humiliation, or fear should never be used. Here's what you do want to do. Establish and enforce reasonable rules and limits. Give children a chance to share, to be independent, to be praised, and to be involved. Encourage them to make choices in what they're doing. Let them have a voice in planning their day. Try to understand and respect the child. An example of discipline rather than punishment would be catching a child doing something right. For example, you have these very wiggly children, and often what teachers are doing are saying, sit still, fold your legs, don't do this, and the children con continue to be wiggly. What you can do instead is to catch them in those moments when they are doing something right. Take some time to think about what you're doing for the long term. You're trying to help a child behave well and be independent because it's the right thing to do, not just because adults are around telling the child what to do. You're not just taking care of a child today. You're helping someone learn self-control. their hands to learn a lot about their world. Making these discoveries can be a dirty business, so it's important that children learn the right way to wash their hands. Not only to keep away the dirt you can see, but also the germs you can't. Well, I've been working with kids for about 10 years at a couple different child care centers, and I have noticed that the centers that have really good hand washing policies, both the teachers and the kids, end up having kids that are less sick. And if they do get sick, they get healthier more quickly. The most important thing you can do to keep yourself and the children healthy is to wash your hands the right way. Let's look at the hand washing method the state of Arizona wants you to follow before mealtime and after toileting. Here are the supplies you need. You need warm running water. Of course, you need soap and individual paper towels or a hand dryer. Here's what you want to do. Wet the hands with warm running water. Apply the soap. Wash the fronts, backs, and in between the fingers. Use gentle pressure and rub the hands together. You should spend between 10 to 20 seconds on this part. 
Children and adults need to wash hands for about 20 seconds to get rid of all the germs. And how do you really know how that is? It's not like you have a stopwatch going. A really good um, rule of thumb is to have kids sing the happy birthday song. That worked at one of the centers I worked at. Or you can have them sing just about any song. You can always make up your own song about hand washing and the kids love that. Happy birthday to you. Rinse all the soap and soil from the hands with running water, letting the dirty water go down the drain. Dry the hands completely with a disposable paper towel or commercial hand blower. You may need more than one paper towel. Some people use the paper towel to turn off the faucet and open the door. Immediately throw away any used paper towels in the trash. Small children need more help washing their hands, but everyone will be better off if you set a good example of washing your hands well and often. You can call it the bottom line in caring for young children. A clean diaper can make all the difference to them. And for you, knowing how to change a diaper properly can help keep disease from spreading. The area for diaper changing should be separated from anywhere food is prepared with a nearby sink and a sturdy surface for the child to lie down. It's a good idea to check on the diaper changing supplies before you get started since you cannot leave the child alone in the middle of a changing to go get something you need. These are things that should always be in the diapering area. Soap, bleach water, plastic bags, latex gloves, lined trash cans. These are items you will need to gather for each child you change. Diapers, wipes, and a change of clean clothes if necessary. Place the child on the diapering surface. If the diaper has leaked, put a paper towel on the surface first. Put on latex gloves and don't touch anything you don't need to. If the child's clothing is dirty, take it off and put it in a plastic bag labeled with the child's name. This should go in a separate container. Remove the soiled diaper, throw it away in the container for dirty diapers. Clean the child's bottom with a disposable wipe and throw the wipe away in that same container where the dirty diapers go. To take the gloves off, peel them off your hands. They'll come off inside out, then throw them into the container for dirty diapers. Now use your clean hands to put on the clean diaper and dress the child with a clean set of clothes if needed. Wash the child's hands with antibacterial soap and running water. The diaper changing is done. You can take the child back to what they were doing. We return the child to their activity and then we soap the surface, wipe it clean, then we bleach the surface and wait for a couple of minutes, dry the bleach, throw the paper towel away, then I wash my hands and dry them. Fill out the diapering log by writing the name of the child, the date and time, and anything you saw that might be important. Sign the log. That's your last step. You can see how changing the diaper properly by following these steps helps prevent contamination. And keeping everyone healthy is important for the bottom line. to pay a lot of attention to the food a child eats because it's not just food, it's fuel for a growing body. Children who eat well-balanced meals and snacks are often happier, more energetic, and just able to better handle all the challenges in their day. The government has some guidelines for meals and snacks if they are prepared and served by the child care program. Here's what to look for. The food itself should have nutrients and food energy that is essential for a child. Junk food can taste good, but it doesn't do good things for the child's body. A child needs to eat from all the different food groups. Fruits and vegetables are great foods for children, and they're best when they're served in their natural state. Frozen fruits and vegetables are better than canned, and a lot better than fruit juice.
Cereals and breads should be made with whole grains, and boiled or baked foods should be served more often than fried foods. The center needs to provide milk or juice if it's not provided by a parent. At our center, parents send the lunch every day. We usually make sure to leave whatever the children don't eat in the lunch box and send it home. That way at night, parents can have a good idea of what the children have eaten during the day and compensate for their nutritional right. needs. What week are we Menus for the program need to be posted at least a week in advance. This gives parents a chance to know what will be served in case the child has any food allergies. We all know that in this country, many children are in danger of being overweight. So teaching them healthy attitudes about food will help them now and as they grow up. Here's what you want to do. Make sure meals and snacks are served about the same time each day. Don't serve big portions. A child doesn't need a huge serving. Follow the guidelines for child portions that the government gives, and if a child is still hungry, he or she can be given another serving. When you offer that second serving, offer vegetables, fresh fruit, and whole grain breads and cereals first. Those are the foods that are key to a healthy body. When we were growing up, it was pretty standard practice that adults made us sit at the table until we were done with everything on our plate. Now we know that that isn't the best thing to do for children. Children shouldn't be forced to eat if they're already full. It can really encourage them to overeat. Don't bring in food as a way to comfort a child or as a reward for their behavior or to distract them. Make meal and snack time a pleasant time for children. Don't use that time to punish or lecture. Let staff members model good eating habits. Encourage children to feed themselves and use good table manners. Remember, you're not just helping a child eat today's meal. You're building attitudes toward food that can make a big difference in their overall health for years to come.